welcome to a brand new episode of Business PNG. Now tonight on the show, we feature the second senior officials meetings and related meetings held right here in Port Moresby. Discussions included women in the economy, fisheries in the global value chain, as well as economic empowerment for people living with disabilities in the APAC region. The APAC region is experiencing broad-based economic growth that has seen significant contributions from trade and household spending. Short-term GDP growth projections have seen a growth of 4.1 percent between 2017 and 2018 and are expected to continue in the near term. Growth in the APAC region, which accounts for half of global trade and 60% of world GDP, surged to a healthy 4.1% in 2017, from 3.4% in 2016. High growth is expected to be maintained in 2018 to 2019. According to the recent APAC regional trends analysis, APAC economies continue to strengthen, but this growth depends on market openness and integration in the Asia-Pacific. So uh, over the last couple of years, I mean, trade has been, trade performance has been pretty dismal. Uh, we've, we've, almost all the APAC economies have reported contraction numbers. And if only since, uh, I would say, the middle of 2016, we are beginning to show that that pick up that in economic momentum, increase in global demand, and we can see that in the trade numbers um, from contra contractions for both uh, exports and imports, both in value and in volume. We can see that turnaround happening in 2017. Uh, for example, in terms of value, uh, merchandise exports grew by 10.2 percent compared to a contraction of 3.9 percent and imports to 11.7% uh, in 2017 compared to a uh, negative growth of 3.5%. And practically, as I mentioned, every, you can see that at individual APEC economies, practically all the APEC economies, have, you see that turnaround in, in, in their trade numbers. Director for the APAC Policy Support Unit, Dennis Hugh, stated that Papua New Guinea being the smallest and least developed economy in the APAC region, factors in through the nation's mining sector and a significant growth in commodities. In, in many ways, uh, the, the, some of the recommendations that come out of the report does emphasize that it's, it's, uh, it's not one size fits all. In fact, many of the inclusion po policies are really at the domestic level. Um, and what we're trying to do in APEC is to look at best practices, you know, what's been done in some of the APEC, what, is, what has worked, what hasn't worked in terms of inclusion policies, whether it's social protection, labor policies, environmental policies, and, and, and you can learn from there. So uh, it's, I think it's not a question of whether you're ready to, to do it, but to, in APEC is a great platform for you to see what others have done and to see whether you can adapt that. At the, at the local level. Um, on the contribution to the global, I, I can't, I'm sorry, for the APEC, I don't have the exact figure on how much uh, PNG contributes to, to the APEC uh, economy, but uh, all I can say is that um, there's been a significant improvement, both also in PN, PNG's economic growth, um, and I, I think a large part of the exports are in the mining sector. And we've seen an increase uh, of uh, commodity prices also as part of the, the improvements in the global economy. And that has, of course, benefited uh, PNG and also many APEC economies who, are, who, are, uh, who have a lot, significant uh, exports within the mining sector. So in that sense, I think we see that, that improvement in, uh, in uh, economic numbers in, in PNG as well. <laughs> I'm Leanne Girari in Sydney, and you're watching Business PM. Trade ministers from around the APAC region were in Port Moresby last week for the 24th Ministers Responsible for Trade meeting. Now, discussions on the table included free trade, as well as the challenges this may bring about. During the recent APAC high-level meetings, the second senior officials' meetings and the 24th trade ministers' meeting, a dialogue on free trade in the region and the challenges that may come with it was had. 
the resolve to send a message of solidarity to the global economy that the APAC region believes in a free, fair, non-discriminatory and inclusive multilateral trading system. Additionally, with the advent of technology, another issue on the agenda is digital trade and the new set of challenges this could present. At a joint ministerial press conference hosted after the meeting, Papua New Guinea's Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Rimbing Pato, said that the ministers agree that though these new tools for commerce create more opportunities for the region's MSMEs, they also present new challenges and there would have to be a balance between facilitating free flow of data while protecting consumers' data and security. We've agreed to work uh, uh, collaboratively as we see to drive the key agenda of APEC as a driver of sustainable economic growth and prosperity for the Asia-Pacific uh, region. Of course, we see that there are challenges as we move uh, to uh, uh, address some of the issues in each of our APEC economies because none of us is the same. We have unique circumstances which we need to address separately, but as we see as a united group, we can address those challenges in, in cooperation uh, so that we will ensure the success of economic growth, trade liberalization, uh, freeing of markets in addressing each of the challenges which are unique to all of the member uh, APEC uh, uh, economies. It will take a cooperative effort to manage the challenges. He also urged the individual governments to remain committed to inclusive economic growth. There is a lot of ongoing work for uh, APEC uh, in the years ahead. We need to improve connectivity, uh, deepen regional economic uh, integration, and uh, we will need to work closely uh, with an international rules-based order where the WTO's uh, role is a cornerstone of advancing uh, trade and freeing up markets and economic development in the APEC uh, economies. All ministers were in agreement to work together to accelerate efforts towards achieving the Bogor Goals, the Lima Declaration on Free Trade Agreement for Asia Pacific, and to harness the opportunities brought about by the internet and digital economy. During the meetings, the consensus was that the APEC economies must lead the economic growth in the world and the agenda to promote sustainable, innovative and inclusive growth in the region remains a priority, despite growing digital divide, income gap and social inequality. Our APEC economies are all very active on several fronts. And we have long recognized that the roadmap to free trade in Asia Pacific as a region enjoys many pathways. So whether you look at CPTPP, which engages a number of the APEC members, the RCEP negotiations well underway and well advanced, engaging others of our members with some overlap, sub-regional efforts as ASEAN continues its integration uh, agenda fairly robustly and so on. We're all contributing in one way or another through our own efforts and through plurilateral efforts to ultimately the APEC goal of a free trade area of Asia uh, Pacific. APEC itself is not the negotiating forum. It is a very valuable forum for exchanging views, learning best practices, and benefiting from each other's experiences in these other negotiating fora. As Australia, as one of the people that have been in APEC right from the start, the importance uh, of this forum uh, is the ability to get together, uh, uh, continue relationships, create new relationships, and, um, uh, and as uh, my colleague from Canada said, uh, uh, in the context of other things happening around the region, uh, uh, the, the forum of APEC is a very, very important one. Uh, that uh, we're, we're discussions looking at the future and uh, 
um, the the theme of uh, this weekend being digitalisation and uh, the the promise of of bringing people into the worldwide economy through that, but also looking at what restrictions we might have as individual countries that are prohibiting that, and those discussions are, are very very important. And uh, uh, I think it's very uh, important to note that all the countries of APEC are here today uh, and uh, uh, have uh, in good faith uh, and in good humour uh, and positively engaged in the process and I think that is the essence of this forum. And the ministers agree that working together ensures meaningful outcomes for the people, especially as the region is harnessing opportunities brought about by the internet and digital economy. Representing Papua New Guinea, Minister for Commerce and Industry Wera Mori stated that though Papua New Guinea is the smallest and least developed of the APEC economies, the country is working on evolving and adapting to the global shift towards digitalization. Digital technology is very important and that we must be able to not only communicate but connect with the rest of the world. Um, we have, uh, you know, we are now in place uh, appropriate legislations, and as I speak, we have the fiber optics being laid between Australia and Papua New Guinea to basically improve that uh, connectivity. Now, it is indeed a challenge, but uh, I'm sure that there are many, you know, where, where there is a vision, there is a way, and that we are working towards achieving that. We would want to connect our, the back of our 8.5 million so that they can be able to especially participate in the MSMEs and the SMEs. And, and, and there, are different, you know, for, uh, there are different approaches to that. And some has been demonstrated uh, not only yesterday, but the day before yesterday. And, that, and, and, and we are basically working on that to uh, improve that. And so the, the, um, we, we have our own, uh, we, we basically have our goals to do so. We are working on it and we'll arrive there. I'm Leanne Girari in Port Mosby and you're watching Business Community. Amidst a fast-changing global landscape, women's economic empowerment and inclusion is critical. The APEC region has long recognized the potential that women can contribute to economic growth in the region, as well as barriers and challenges that impeded women to meaningfully participate in various sectors. During our hosting year, the Papua New Guinean government is highlighting the importance of the digital age and the impact it has on the economy in general, paying close attention to women's economic inclusion and empowerment in particular. PNG's APEC senior official Lahui Ako reiterated the government's initiative that the digital discussion welcomes the idea that technology has the ability to provide opportunities that have the potential to change the way women participate in the economy. Uh, I'm so my address that follows uh, reiterates the main message that I have uh, uh, tried to drive and that is uh, gender inclusion and women's economic empowerment has been placed at the front and center of the inclusion agenda that we are driving in 2018. Women across the world continue to be confronted with many challenges, which uh, stem from traditional gender perspectives that try to define the role of women, gender-based violence, and the impact of the digital divide in the gender gap. It therefore means that with this vast array of issues ranging from traditional gender issues to the more emerging ones, of uh, digital disruption and the impact of climate change, our conversation must remain uh, relevant and responsive to these shifts. It is uh, encouraging to hear of the great volume of work that is currently being uh, pursued by the PPWE to address these issues and efforts in mainstreaming, mainstreaming gender in all areas of work in APEC. You can be rest assured that uh, Papua New Guinea will fully support all efforts as we believe that any effort to integrate women into all economic and social areas is progress in all its forms. A number of APAC economies have also supported this initiative for policy dialogue on promoting women in various sectors. 
Uh, when we look domestically, of course, we're running off Papua New Guinea's theme for the year, which is digital, but looking at where we can apply it. And some of that relates to um, Papua New Guinea trying to help the other economies to get together to agree how we're going to carry out all these initiatives. That's more procedural, but that's progressing. Um, in addition, of course, we're interested in what we see here about particular examples, because the big deal potentially from electronic commerce is not actually the big platforms. It's what it could do to revolutionise small, medium enterprises and micro enterprises. The APAC Working Group Policy Partnership on Women and the Economy hosted a conference and trade expo in Mount Hagen to demonstrate the value of women SME owners in the Highlands regions. The women came from far and wide to display their goods and services. We, we all know that uh, PNG is um, hosting APEC this year. Um, our department is um, responsible for uh, human beings, huh? women, children, um, people with disability, the informal sector. So. Um, we thought it was important that we take the APEC agenda um, to our small people. So we have been hosting um, regional workshops and expos for the last uh, few months, starting in the New Guinea Islands and the Highlands Regional Workshop is the final one of all these uh, series of workshops and expos. So basically, um, we are targeting um, women entrepreneurs, small business women uh, who may not necessarily be um, part of the uh, SME level and uh, we invite them to come and um, just learn a little bit about APEC and the policies that the government uh, has established and uh, at the same time we allow them to say, showcase the businesses which they are involved in. Survival of every family in a home depends on a woman. Nearly 70 to 80 percent of all Mary Blom me plan of Papua New Guinea. Me plan of got several work money, lost to our uh, office number. So plant the time, me plus a little work in gardening, blow me plan. Na salim blow personal home family, lo kai kai. Na me plan a little too, lo marketing. So lo free time, lo me plan bill me want plan big plan something through where eh, eh, Mister helping me plan mama lo market, lo me plan at this plan kind. So lo walk about lo bill me where me been walk let me come. Lo I'm a sixteen plan Christmas me been walk lo bill me. Me look more say I plan the challenge and me start lo this plan walk about inside lo this plan. Me plan number one challenge lo me plan em eh, finance. Me plan no cut uh, start start up or some money where government em eh, can support me plan lo starting me plan lo working business lo me plan. So plan the time me plan. So <laughs> So we got big club band of Papua New Guinea. So. And that's all we have for this episode as well as this season of Business PNG. For more information or if you would simply like to view this as well as the other episodes from this season, visit MTV online at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Or to simply join the conversation, like our page on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at the Twitter handle at Business PNG. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Gerari and this was Business PNG.